never in the field of crop farm endeavour was so much achieved by just one person for the benefit of so many. Among the dazzling gold of ripening canola and the vivid green of maturing wheat crops sits Henty. Like many of the towns in the grains belt of southern New South Wales, it's barely a blip on the map. Its massive silos speak of the importance of grain. And the town's museum tells of Henty's most famous son. Today is a red letter day for Henty much anticipated unveiling of a sculpture to honour the pioneer inventor, Hedley Taylor. We've been watching it and hearing about it for so long and uh, yeah, it'd be great to see it. Hedley Taylor is hardly a household name, though to many he's a mostly unsung Australian hero. Never in the field of crop farm endeavour was so much achieved by just one person for the benefit of so many. This day was the culmination of almost four years of hard work and fundraising. I salute Hedley Taylor and the sculpture we're about to see as a salute to the creative human endeavour and spirit of yesteryear, which still means so much to us this year and beyond. Thank you. That is terrific sculpture. Hard way they used to have to make the cogs years ago. Among the crowd was Hedley Taylor's only surviving son, John, now in his 92nd year. Everyone was thrilled by the life-sized bronze. <laughs> I think it's a wonderful sculpture that's been put on display here today. It really shows the essence of the man. He's there, he's uh, at his anvil, the determination on his face, the strength of the man, uh, the focus. The journey to install Hedley Taylor to his rightful and prominent place in Australian history began in early 2014. This all started from a landline program originally and someone said we should do a sculpture and we said why not. That someone was former grain grower and machinery repairman Kerry Peach. They make monuments of everything. Why can't they make a monument of Hedley Taylor We're in front of a header? Back in 2014, the vintage machinery collector realised his dream of holding an open day on his farm, showcasing the history of grain growing. Beginning with genuine horsepower, this day-long cavalcade was a trip through time, with Kerry's own collection providing a vivid display of how harvesting has progressed over the years. I don't forget that day because it was 2014 and it was 42 degrees. Yeah, I suggested that um, they should have a monument made of Hedley Taylor. And not thinking that it, this was ever eventuate, but it did. And I'm really wrapped in that because famous people need to have uh, monuments and they need to be recognised. Landline was also in Henty on that occasion to attend the annual agricultural show. 2014 was a special year. After all, it was there exactly a century earlier that Hedley Taylor was at last able to demonstrate his much revised and modified but now successful grain harvester. In far off Western Australia, then Governor Malcolm McCusker, who also happens to be a grain grower, was more than a little taken by the landline story. I saw that and was immediately inspired by the story. I'd never heard of Hedley Taylor before, but I, I didn't realise that really it was through Hedley Taylor that the combine harvester was produced. The good governor made a sizeable private donation to the cause, much needed because what was proposed, a life-size bronze sculpture, would cost close to $100,000. Once people started to understand what it was all about and, and what this great Australian had done, that caused them to say, well, I'll put my hand in my pocket too. Over time, the cause and the fundraising gathered momentum. From a field of 14, up-and-coming Melbourne sculptor Paul Smiths was selected to undertake the work. Paul's a perfectionist to get it right, and we're just so proud to be having him to do it. This is the model on which the bronze cast will be made. I think it's, um, 
important we go through what actually still needs to be done. It's to tell the story rather than just a, a person standing there. So it's, it's got to create uh, what Headley did and tell the story. So it's got to be his anvil, which is the centrepiece of what he started working from. So rather than move it physically, Paul Smith's got a little inventive. In the Headley Taylor Museum in Henty is the original anvil used by the inventor. Paul Smith's employed 3D scanning and printing to get an exact replica. Things like the anvil, the cog, the tongs, uh, the hammer, they were all uh, 3D scanned. Paul Smith didn't have much to go on, just a few old photographs of a young Headley Taylor. So he sourced period costume and employed a model who was the exact build and dimensions as the inventor. Then he had to devise a pose that conveyed a sense of power and movement. Is he bending steel? Is he hammering something on top of the anvil? Was he left-handed? Was he right-handed? You know, what tools was he using? Was he using a small hammer or a large hammer? It's yeah, just dependent on really what he was doing at that time. And we decided that Headley was uh, working on a cog uh, specific to the head of harvester. Headley Taylor's invention, the header harvester, would change the face of global agriculture. So why was it such a game changer? Well, this is what preceded it, a harvester known as a stripper. This one was built in 1886. If you had just a stripper, well, you couldn't strip down crop because you couldn't pick it up. There was no knife to cut the, the, the heads off and it just, it just hung in the crop in the, in the comb and uh, you couldn't get your grains. So crops knocked down or tangled by storms couldn't be harvested. Headley Taylor was determined to find a solution. Well, Bruce, this is a really amazing bit of Australian heritage. Headley Taylor's very own blacksmith shop. Yeah, it's amazing what he could make out of a little blacksmith shop like this. Uh, amazing technology which he changed and uh, built into his headers. Headley Taylor's personal motto described his struggles. His first two machines were expensive failures. Wouldn't have been easy, but um, nil desperatum, which was written on his machines, which translates to do not despair, or some people say never give up. As a community as a whole of Australia, we owe Headley an enormous debt for what he did, because he, in the process he went broke a couple of times and his brother Horace and Gordon helped him out and he had a friend in Albury who financially helped him out too. The design of the third machine represented a momentous technological leap. These uh, modifications that Headley put into his machine of the knife section, cutting off the grain rather than beating it, uh, adding in the spirals which gathered the grain and pulled it in, and also he incorporated a level lift so that the machine would go down and not point downwards so the grain would not fall out at the gathering point at the front. So it was always level and pointing backwards. So there's, there's claims that it was somewhere between 20 to 25% of grain could be saved. That Those figures speak for themselves. The McKay name is illustrious and elemental to this story and to the success of the header. Dougal McKay's great-grandfather, machinery manufacturer Hugh Victor McKay, was for a long time Australia's largest industrialist. His sunshine stripper harvester dominated the market. When McKay saw Headley Taylor's invention in a field of wheat at Henty, he struck on a joint venture. He came up and, and saw the demonstrations and the trials in 1916. He walked around and he looked at this machine and probably being a, a reasonably astute businessman, could see the benefits of the machine, could see how they could be incorporated into his own machines and uh, was quick to, to uh, negotiate, get Headley down to Melbourne, try and do some negotiations to buy his patents and probably being a forward thinker to tap into his ingenuity and have him come and work he was such a modest man and such a, a, a patriotic Australian uh, who said, I don't want this to go overseas, I want this to be manufactured here in Australia. And he found a manufacturer, H.V. McKay, who did just that. 
Hedley Taylor signed a two-year deal with McKay. He went on to spend the rest of his working life, 35 years, on a mere handshake agreement. A pretty amazing partnership that must have happened between the two men, each with equal respect, and together, the synergies they had, they created something special. And Bruce, amazingly, 1917, so just when he'd invented this machine, the farmers here already were proclaiming it as a world-changing invention. They knew its significance. They managed to get Hedley back after one year at Sunshine to thank him for what he had done for them. They all knew it was such a great thing. It saved their income, it saved their farms, and it put the grain industry in Australia on the map. That was especially true in 1920. Well, it was a a year when there was wild storms right across the eastern seaboard, we had massive crops, looked like a bumper harvest, great profits for farmers, flattened by these storms. Hedley Taylor invented the Hedley Taylor crop lifter, which attached to the front of the machines. Uh, it would gently lift up the straw and the heads so it could feed properly into the front of the machines. And Farmers that were going to be in, thought they were in despair were delighted that they, was, they were uh, still harvesting some 30 bushels, I think 10 bags to the acre back in that day, which is a huge yield. So the, the factory worked day and night. They uh, produced nearly on a thousand machines and to get them out into the field, all fitted with Headley Taylor crop lifters, and uh, the crop was saved. This sculpture has also been a collaboration between two men. In a northern suburb of Melbourne, Ewan Coates had the job of casting in bronze the finished work. I love working with Paul because uh, we, we worked on so many projects together, so I think we kind of second guess each other. Uh, he's done some modelling for me and vice versa. And... Pouring molten bronze is a tricky affair, hence the protective gear. It's very heavy and very hot, about 1,100 degrees Celsius. We pull it out of the, of the furnace, uh, probably at about 11.30, let it cool down, take the, the slag off and um, pour around that range. It depends on the, the size and shape of the object we're pouring. This is one of the largest components of the statue, the mould for the anvil. And there's enough molten metal for a couple more of Headley's body parts. People often say you bronze something as if you spray it in bronze, but it starts off, of course, as a sculpture, which has to be moulded, then has to be made into a, a, a hollow wax, and then has to have a second refractory mould around that, and then that has to be put in the kiln and burnt out and then flipped and poured. And so it's, it's really the expense of casting is mainly in the labour and the process, and funnily enough, uh, not the bronze. Once cooled, the mould is broken, and out of the clay and fiberglass padding emerges the as yet unrefined face of Hedley Taylor. Then the moulded parts are welded together, the joins smoothed out to be seamless. Well, that, hey? In late August, the Taylor family arrived to check on progress. Gee, this is looking good. It's a little bit mm. different the last time, isn't it? Certainly is. Hmm. How much more have you got got to do? We're probably ninety percent there. So um, some welding of some pieces that you can't see underneath the cape. Over four decades, Hedley Taylor conceived and manufactured dozens of inventions. Next to the header, his next most important was the auto header, first made in 1924. Here is the latest development in Australian harvesting machinery. The auto header. This is a self-propelled machine cutting a strip of crop 12 feet wide, traveling under its own power like a motor car and with a crew of two, one man to drive and one to bag the grain on the platform. He had its own motor, which did away with horses. The machine takes pride of place in Kerry Peach's big collection. It's a 1925 auto header and it's got a 12-foot front on it, and it's got a Fortson engine on it where you're sitting alongside the oven all day. It's also got an automatic lift on the comb. You push the lever forward and it goes up and you pull it back and it comes down and you have it what height you want it. 
I've got quite a few of the machines that have that been built, Headley Taylor's idea. Kerry Peach has even hoisted one of his Sunshine Brand harvesters onto a pedestal. This sculpture will both be a tourist attraction for Henty and at last fully honour a great Australian. Because it's a good story, because it's a story that Australia should know about, and because the young people today should know about this story, it's, it's an easy story to sell. It is a great story. Today's headers, with immense horsepower and monolithic size, still owe much to their smaller, more modest forerunner, and to an extraordinary inventor who forged a machine that changed the course of world history. We've got uh, statues back in West Australia, I'm sure, in, in uh, Victoria and New South Wales, statues of uh, star footballers, uh, and they deserve it. But I think uh, at least as much as deserving a man like Hedley Taylor, uh, who did so much for Australia and indeed the world in agriculture. He just loved inventing, and he was uh, the great, Australia's greatest agricultural inventor, without a doubt. It's a really a great piece of art and it'll be there for eternity.